backroom dealing cost him his political career, but Texas House Speaker Dennis Bonin will not resign. He's just not seeking re-election. Here's what is clear. Even on the way out, Bonin still remains powerful. We reached out to a half dozen local House Republicans to appear on our program this morning here. Not a single one was available to talk about this in studio. So this morning instead, we have State Rep Ramon Romero, a Fort Worth Democrat, and the very first to call for uh, Bonin to go and joining the question as always is Bud Kennedy from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Guys, thanks for coming in from Fort Worth. Good morning. Glad to be here again. Thank you for having me, Kendall. Dennis Bonin did not resign. He's just not going to run for, for re-election. Was that the right decision? I, I think that if he really wanted a, the, the body to heal, he would, he would resign and he would let another member deal with a very important task of, a, of appointing a, an appropriations chair and starting to deal with our inter, interim charges that we inevitably, inevitably are going to have to start dealing with very quickly. If he resigned, though, wouldn't the governor have to call a special session to, uh, for the House to elect a new speaker? That's correct, and I think that's the fear of the governor that we'd have to take on some other things that are very important, like what happened in El Paso and so on. Well, well let's talk about uh, what I just mentioned a moment ago. You were the first to call for Bonin to go. He finally did. What are House members now saying to each other? What were the texts you got from uh, other colleagues and friends? Uh, from from on both sides, uh, thank you for being outspoken initially. Uh, you know, it was really going to take somebody to tell the truth. Uh, and I said from the very beginning, this was a matter of character for me. You know, as, as a young business owner, I learned that, you know, if, you, if you're a poor judge of character, you're going to pay the price somewhere down the line. Uh, I always questioned uh, the speaker's uh, character. But, you know, I have to say, 67 of 67 Democrats voted for him on January the 9th and gave him all of the benefit of the doubt. It was all in his court. He had a really good session. Uh, but when we were at a session, things changed really quick, clearly. You were saying that the Democrats voted for him. Democrats voted for the bills. And Absolutely. You know, passed things unanimously, yeah. gave him a standing ovation yeah. you know, for all the work on school finance. Yeah. Were you wrong? Uh, I, think that, I think that a lot of the things that people didn't see uh, was uh, was just under the surface, and there was a lot of really hurt feelings amongst members. Uh, that wasn't the case when Joe Strauss was there. I think the the Speaker of the House must do a really good job of making all members feel like their districts are important, regardless of whether that member comes from a different party. Uh, I think that one of the most privileged votes that I ever have had the opportunity to take is that vote for Speaker. And when we voted for that speaker, we voted for that person being one that could see past the partisanship. Uh, so yeah, I think that we absolutely made a poor decision because the history shows that you're, this is not a one and done kind of job. Uh, that speaker needs to remain in place for a while, have a long term you know, uh, vision for the state of Texas and making those corrections. He started to make those corrections. It's unfortunate that he made, he made those personal decisions on a partisan uh, level. Have you spoken to Bonin since all this happened? No, I haven't taken the time to call him. I've, I've, I haven't texted him anything. I feel like, um, you know, I don't think he wants to talk to me. What would you say to him, though? Look, he once gave a speech on the, on the, on the floor uh, that a reputation took a lifetime to build, but it could be ruined in a minute in the Texas legislature. Uh, and I would say that, uh, that he's doing the right thing by going back to his family and refocusing on, on that family values that he uh, inevitably was raised with. Well, one thing that struck us as we prepared for this program is that we reached out to a half dozen or so local House Republicans here in North Texas to see if they would appear yeah. uh, here this morning. And they were all, you know, unavailable, out of town, yeah. couldn't talk or some right. didn't even call us back. Bonin's influence remains powerful even on his way out. What do you make of this that Republicans don't even want, want to discuss it? He's going to have an influence on those interim charges. He's going to have an influence on who's going to become the appropriations chair. He's going to have an influence potentially uh, with a lot of money in the bank. Uh, he, has a big, he has a big bank account, and he's going to be able to put it where he wants. He's still going to play politics. He's still going to play kingmaker. And I think that those people on the Republican side and on the Democratic side, there's a lot of folks that are scared to go out. But look, I mean, we're at a crisis in America where... Uh, we have to look at how we value character and how we value integrity. And for some of us, it's going to be real easy to call a spade a spade. And for others, they're still looking out for their own self-interest. Uh, and maybe you can even argue for their, for their districts. But look, those five that came out, that was very big. That was big, those four chairmen and John Trullo. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. For those folks to come out, kind of proves that the people of Texas, unlike what's happening in Washington, are still able to do that. We're still able to say, look, you were wrong. 
we're going to tell you you're wrong and let the chips fall where they may. So what you're saying is that even though he won't be on the floor having influence, his money will and his campaign bank account. His will. campaign cash will. Absolutely, he's going to have a big. He's having a big impact. And you know, I mean, look, he was already going to go after those 10, 10 Republicans. So I mean, I think it's fair to say that that money is still going to go and it's going to be directed very strategically. Ramon, I don't want to get away without asking you about Tatiana Jefferson's death in Fort Worth, the yeah. police shooting. It's been very much a. a uh, there's been a lot of uh, African American community concern. There's been a lot of uh, ch charges saying that the city is not listening. There's been some, uh, you know, upset people at City Hall yeah. saying the City Hall is not listening. City 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 Council's majority Republican. Yeah. What What do you think is going on in Fort Worth, and what How do you feel about the way the city's handled this? Um, I think that the city's handled it uh, generally poorly. Uh, there was not a single question asked on the first council me me meeting of any of the people testifying, and just really they were trying to get it over with as quickly as possible. But look, the city of Fort Worth has a growth problem. We are addicted to growth. We're now the 13th largest city. The problem is they don't realize where we're actually growing, but we're growing apart. The community in Southeast Fort Worth and in East Fort Worth doesn't feel a part of Fort Worth's growth. They don't feel like they're a part of the good news story. And unfortunately, you have police officers and even just individuals that still think it's that part of town and that that part of town is dangerous. And we see what happens when an officer isn't properly trained uh, and maybe goes in with a preconception of that community that it's more dangerous than it actually is. The shame to me and the gravity of this story is Mrs. Jefferson's mother decided to live in that part of Fort Worth. She recommitted to that part of Fort Worth and her daughter paid the price for it. I don't think that the mayor understands that, and I think it's time for them to really reallocate resources towards East Fort Worth so that uh, Tatiana's uh, death, uh, and some will call it murder, uh, as do I, uh, doesn't, is not a murder or a death in vain. All right, State Rep. Ramon Romero, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Glad to be here. Thank, Thank you, Jason.